Praise God. Thank you, everybody on the praise team. Hallelujah. That was beautiful, wonderful. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, 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 good. Amen. God is good, good, good. Amen. Well, we are being recorded for a later upload. I'm hoping we can eventually do the live again, so it saves us doing about three hours of work that it takes extra to get it on there. Praise God. But we're glad to get it out there. I don't know if you noticed it, but we also had uh, Brother Josh and I Come here most Thursday nights and do a half an hour, and it's a it's a, it's called Pastor, it's Pastor Mike and Josh on Thursday Night Live, and it, it's funny, but it's on our Facebook page and on the church Facebook page and different places like that, and I also loaded it up to YouTube and it's on a few other websites that I load things into because I I I feel. A compulsion, compulsion, pull it compulsion. <laughs> I felt a calling. You know, what was me if I speak, preach not the gospel, right? That's yeah. what Paul said. And, you know, we've all heard the scripture that says, well, I tried to be quiet for a while because I got tired of taking flack, and tired of getting in trouble for preaching the word of God. And after a while, if I was quiet, it says it was like a fire shut up in my bones. And I finally had to say, okay, here it is. I'm telling you the truth, the gospel. Punch me, throw rocks at me, whatever you got to do. But I got to preach that word. Amen? Amen? I feel like I'm a bit tinny here this morning. I'll pull this down a little bit so I'm not... That's all right, brother. I'll, I'll just pull it down here a little bit so I'm not too loud. As long as we're... Are we getting a good re meter reading on the camera? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah. Uh, shouldn't he, I shouldn't be asking. Sorry about that. We're going to talk to you out of Psalm 37 today. You can get your Bible open if you want to, although I'm going to have all the scripture on the screen. And uh, we're trying to, oh yes, what a wonderful thing. We're trying to, no, no we're, we're going to try something new here, and we'll see what happens. Brother Todd really came in the other day, and he's, he's kind of stepping us up in some of our technical stuff, and I appreciate that. But we're going to try to uh, try to get into the Word. Oh, we've got to turn it on, don't we? Turn it on, turn it on. It's like, it's like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Testing. <laughs> Praise God. I want to talk to you out of Psalm 37. And, you know, sometimes the Lord will say, here's a subject you need to talk about, or here's something that's going on in the world or in the church, and you need to talk about it this week. And other times, you know, it's funny how if you really listen to God, you'll get led different ways. You'll hear different ways, you know. There's such a thing as my brother was pointing out here. By the way, come to our Wednesday night Bible study. Brother Gary's doing a great job preparing. He prepares and works hard to get that ready for us on Wednesday night. And it's a great outline and everything. Plus, we have good discussion. We'll have coffee or whatever else. And... Uh, and maybe sometimes cookies or other stuff, it berries, uh, cakes, whatever. <laughs> sometimes some things that won't hurt your diet, but every, every once in a while. But but we have a good time, and you ought to be there. And you, we 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 uh, have a, occasionally we have different different visitors come by, but it's just a good time. Brother Gary, am I right? Should they come on Wednesday night? Right. I think so. He's shaking his head yes, so I guess he may, he's, he agrees with me. <laughs> he and Mary and everybody else that's, that does come, come and be part of that. And, you know, shortly we are going to be doing some work with some young people, young couple. So I really want you to really be here and support that and be part of that. And we'll get a few of our friends that are out this morning come and meet to realize that. But uh, we're having a good time in Jesus. Amen. God is good. All right, so let's read that opening scripture here to begin with. And it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. In that upper left-hand corner, you see something there that says, Worry implies that we don't quite trust God, that he's big enough. God, I, you know, some people think it's their job to worry. Well, if I worried, things would be worse. If I didn't worry, things would get worse. No. You know, worry is unbelief, right? And unbelief never makes things better. And we all prone and tend to have a tendency to worry about things, you know. Worry is trying to think about what, what might happen, what might go wrong. Or, you know, the worst case scenario, what might go wrong. And we'll, we, we hope it doesn't, but i got to worry about it so it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, I think faith is the way to get the blessing of God in your life. Amen? I believe God is going to come through for me and for us. I believe he, he heals all my diseases and, and takes away all my infirmities. I believe he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I believe that, that I, me and my household will serve the Lord. That means if I got any children or grandchildren that I'm concerned about where their heart is with God, I can stand on that scripture and have faith that God's going to bring them in. Amen? Amen? And so Psalm 37, faith, not fear. That's not what maybe wasn't the best title that I was trying to. Think of where it's basic, basically a matter of trust. Trust God and do the right thing. Do good. Commit your way. So it's trust and commit and trust again. Do good. And all these things will work for you. Let's see if I can figure this out. Brother, do I have it right? Is it, is it right? Is it right? Is it right? Is it right? Uh -huh. so we are on... If we don't have it, you'll just have to do it yourself, huh? Well, we got it working the other day. Okay. He's going to help me back there for today. All right. We'll get it fixed. Because we actually we were here for a few hours on Monday or Tuesday and got things working. Really did work. <laughs> but he'll help me. All right, if you go ahead, friend, brother, to the next. So trust God to deal with the bad guys. And we're just going to go kind of a verse by verse down through, through Psalm 37. It's one of my favorite Psalms. Psalms 37, 27, 24, uh, 100, uh, 150. And I got uh, several other scriptures, several, several other Psalms that are among my, among my favorites. But we're going to kind of go down through this. And it starts out saying, do not fret or worry because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Don't allow yourself to wish that you could have what that guy's got. Why can't I have what he's got? I'm trying to serve God and he's not. Well, let me just tell you what. You're, gonna, you're always going to fall short if you, if you try to uh, be jealous about somebody else or wish you had what somebody else had. And uh, if you see somebody that's not doing right and you say, why do they have such an easy life? Well, guess what? They're not going to have an easy eternity, especially if they don't straighten things up. But in the meantime, there's a scripture that says, but his day is coming. Right? <laughs> Amen. So, so if you look at somebody and they seem to be getting away with stuff, you know, you can either say vengeance is mine, saith me, or you can say, well, Lord, I'm going to leave it up to you. That doesn't mean it's wrong for you to stand up for yourself and your rights and stand your ground on some things. That doesn't mean that at all. But what it means is, you know, if something's beyond your ability to affect it or control it, you have to put it in God's hands. Amen? And so do not fret because of evildoers. You can look right now and you can think in our country right now, in America, some people with power, some people with popularity, some people with money seem to be having their way. And they seem to be always doing something evil. It's against our Bible, against our Constitution. It's against everything good and right. And yet they seem to be getting away with it. But guess what? That's only going to be for a little while. And God's going to take care of that. So I want to do my part. I want to speak up. I want to vote. I want to do things like that. But I also don't want to get obsessed with what the devil's doing. I'd rather be obsessed with what God is doing. Amen? I'd rather have my focus on what's God saying, what's God doing, and keep my eyes on that. How many of you know that's the way to go, right? you got to think on the positive, on things that are good and honest and praiseworthy and lovely and virtuous, right? 
And Philippians chapter 4 tells us that. So don't fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Get your eyes off of people and get your eyes on the Lord. How, how many of you know that's a good way to look at this, right? Get your eyes off of people and what you think, why are you doing this to me? Why are you getting away with doing this to me? And like I said, it's okay to stand your ground, but it's not okay to get obsessed with about, with about I'm in the fight and I'm here. I'm going to come get you. <laughs> Verse 2 says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Cut down. You think of that, cut down. You know, when you're mowing your grass, if you've got big tall weeds, <laughs> you cut them down, they're going to die. And that's the end of that. So you might say, well, there's a big old oak tree over there, but it's in the wrong place. When I was in pest control, <laughs> weed control and all that kind of a thing, the definition of a weed was a, any plant where you don't want it. Any plant that's in a place where you don't want it, that's a weed. <laughs> so if it's a big old oak tree, well, please leave those alone as much as possible. But anyway, um, wherever it is, you know, so things that seem to be growing and going and prospering and doing evil, as soon as they're cut off, that's it. They're done. And so you're going to flourish. You're going to be all right. You're going to produce fruit. You're going to have happiness. You're going to have joy. You're going to have a fulfilled purpose in God if you keep your eyes on him. But that other person over there, their day's coming. Love them. Pray that they'll open their eyes and get saved. But in the meantime, don't worry about them. Keep your eyes on the Lord and you be the best you you can be. I've heard people say, young people say, well, I'm looking for the right person to marry. And that's a good idea. Don't marry just anybody. But... But the other part of that is, is be the best person that somebody else can marry. In other words, be the best you that you can be. All right? Is everybody sleeping on me? That's what, be the best you that you can be, and that will help you attract the best other person that you really need in your life. Right? That's right. And so, and that goes not only in marriage, but that goes also you know, when you're a leader, pastor of a church or in any situation where you've got an influence with people and you've got an influence with people, be the best you can be and you'll draw good people to you. Now, we got some good folks in this church, so I'm not going to take credit for that, but we, we got some good people in this church. But they'll be cut down and it says soon they'll be like grass, it's grass clippings. You think of this. That the people in this world that are doing evil will soon be like grass clippings. <laughs> They'll soon be like dried weeds sitting off the side. <laughs> and you're going to be green and flourishing and fruitful. Amen? So that's why doing right is always the thing to do. Go ahead. Trust, do good, dwell, feed. Delight. I'm looking at scriptures here, two verses, verses three and four of Psalm 37. And one of the things you can do sometimes in a verse like this, with this kind of phrase in it, is circle the verb, circle the verb, circle the verb, circle the verb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. In other words, stay close to God. Dwell close to him. Live close to the heart and mind of God. Live in his word. Live in his presence. Amen. Dwell in the land. And then feed on his faithfulness. Trust that God's going to be with you every step of the way. Yep. So, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to stay close to you. Lord, and I'm going to just eat at your, eat at your table, Lord, out of your word and out of your Holy Spirit presence. Amen. You're going to delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. My delight is in the Lord. Amen. Well, you say, well... I sure love doing this fun thing or that fun thing or this recreation or that outdoor thing or this uh, hobby that I have. I just love doing that. Okay, as long as those loves don't get in the way of loving God. But my delight, my true delight, even though there's things that I enjoy, I enjoy sports. I enjoy a little bit of you know stock car or uh, NASCAR racing and uh, even Indy car racing, watching some of that. I enjoy going to baseball games and, and stuff like that and... And I enjoy going to a nice restaurant and all those sort of things or going to some amusement parks that we've been to in the past where we had a fun time. Uh, you know, those are nice days. Or just going down by to the lake with maybe a few family and friends and just spending the day out there cooking out and fishing and stuff. Those are really fun things. And so I sort of delight in those things. But I really, above everything, 
What a delight in the Lord. And his presence is fullness of joy, right? At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I think that's Psalm 16. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. In other words, if you want pleasure, if you want a delight in something that's delightful, delight in him. Amen? He's so good. And he'll fix a lot of things for you. So delight yourself also in the Lord. And here's that last part there. He will give you the desires of your heart. Think of this. If you're going to be that one that will trust, you'll do good. You say, I'm going to do the right thing. You're going to dwell, stay close to God. You're going to feed at his table every day in his word. You're going to delight yourself in him. Then guess what? Your heart's going to be in exactly the right place so he can give you what your heart wants. Right? Right? He's, you're going to, heart's going to be in just the right place so God can give you what your heart wants. Your heart's desire. Now, if your heart is far from God, he'd be, he would really hurt you if he gave you your heart's desire. Because your heart's desire is for evil things that will take you away from God maybe forever. And so he doesn't want to do that. But he wants to help fix your heart. How many of you know when you first get saved, we got heart problems? And we got head problems, Right? We even got feet problems because they take us to the wrong places. We got hand problems because they want to do stuff that Christians shouldn't do, right? We got eye problems, seeing things, looking for things, and looking at things that Christians shouldn't be doing. And so we got problems with all this stuff. But when you come to him, he'll fix your heart. He'll fix your head. He'll, he'll get your eyes redirected. He'll head, cause your ears to listen to the right stuff. He'll take your steps, your feet in the right direction. And he'll put, get your hands busy about the right works, the righteous things of God. Amen. And when he does that, then you can say, Lord, this is what I really want. He'll say, well, good, I want to give that to you. Right? Amen. Amen. Rest, wait patiently, don't worry, don't be angry. Again, these two verses, 7 and 8. I skipped a little bit, didn't I? Verses 7 and 8, what we're looking at here, you know, it's similar to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He'll keep you on the right path of blessing and protection. So we're, that's Psalm, Proverbs 3. But back here to this psalm, verse 7 and 8 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. He's kind of repeating some things in here, isn't he? He said something he said before because we don't always get it the first time he says it. Right? Yeah. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Are you doing it? It's one thing to say, yeah, I've heard that before. It's okay. Are you being, have you been doing that? You know, I heard a pastor say one time that he was preaching on a certain topic, and he preached the same message ten Sundays in a row, and people started thinking, Pastor, don't you know anything else in the Bible but that? You were kind of getting tired of hearing that same sermon every week. And they said, he said, well, as soon as you start doing that, then we'll move on to the next subject. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that to you. Because I would sound sort of smart aleck coming from me. But anyway, but the truth of the matter it is, friends, the doers of the word are to bless. Not just hearers only, right? Right? It's not just hearers only that get blessed. It's doers. Put your feet to the ground, put your hands to the wheel and your shoulder to the wheel and get your eyes and mind and heart in the right place and do what the Bible says. So the next verse, it says, rest in him. <sighs> rest in him. Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, different places it talks about when they were going through the wilderness, they did not learn to rest in God and so they missed out on the blessing. He says, you got to rest in the Lord today. And that means have your peace in him. Settle on whatever he says is what you want to do. Wherever he wants to take you is where you want to go. Whatever he wants you to do is what you want to do. He says, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Well, uh, and somebody says, and Todd said the other day, and we all know this is true. Don't ask for patience. Because the Bible says tribulation works patience, right? 
no, so you don't want to ask for tribulation. But what you can do is say, Lord, well, you don't, yet, here's, the, here's the funny thing on that. Lord, I want patience. I don't want it right now. Anyway, <laughs> it's like, then if you really want to say it to him like that, he'll go, bam. <laughs> All right, now endure that for a while. <laughs> no, he's really not mean like that. But the thing is, race, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. How many of you ever had something that it just seemed like it was never going to happen? Never, 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 never. This ain't ever going to get me. And the breakthrough is never going to happen. The change is never going to come. And then in some of those instances where the change finally comes and the breakthrough happens and the prayer is answered, you say, oh, this, you know, it's like it's forever and ever. Oh, Lord, when? That brother was talking about that a few weeks ago. Oh, Lord, when? Oh, Lord, when? Well, you know, God says, you know, when everything comes together and you're ready and the other people that are involved in your situation, they have to get ready to. And then I'll bring it all together and then I'll say, there it is. And you say, Wow, what a mighty God we serve. What a great God. He made it all happen. It just took a while. <laughs> God, please, a little sooner. And some of us have had, you know, really some difficult things, you know, and it's not funny. To, it's not to make light of what people go through. I'm a, I'm a people just like you. Me and my wife, we're people too. And so there are things that, you know, you hurt and you wait and you wonder and you say when and why and how and what's going on here and when's it going to happen and God are you still there stuff like that those moments you know but he is still there and he is working whether you realize it or not and he will come through for you the thing is is if you don't give up I've heard people say it this way you can get that close to your breakthrough and then finally get a mean or give up attitude and lose out all of it you might be just this, just this far from the finish line. Cross the line, and here's the blessing. And you say, oh, I'm tired. I waited long enough. I'm mad at God. I'm just not going to try anymore. Goodbye. And you, God says, you were right there. What happened? I almost had you cross the line. I almost had you to your breakthrough, your blessing. Why'd you quit? Don't quit, friends. God loves you, and he'll be faithful. He'll bring you through. It says, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Well, over the last few years in America, it seems like a lot of wicked schemes have come to pass. But I'm going to tell you what, a lot of those have come and they're going to pass. And something new, a new day is here. We, you have just got to say, and I've got to say too, that we believe God's the, still the God of the breakthrough. Amen. He's still the God of new beginnings. And he's still the, the God who respects faith and positive confessions and, and trust in him. He respects those things, and he will come through for you. Amen? Come on. Don't, it says, to rest and wait patiently. Don't fret. For him who prospers in his way, they won't prosper forever. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret and only causes Harm. Worry doesn't fix anything. Sleepless nights and agitation and things you allow to happen in your mind and emotions that get you physically sick. That's not God's way. He wants you to say, okay, God, this is yours. I'm, I'm moving on to something else. And if you want me to deal with it, eh, I'll, I'll, you let me know and you bring it to me and I'll act on it again. But in the meantime, I'm, if, don't you feel like every once in a while you have to take a day off from your troubles? Every once in a while you've got to have a day off. Just I don't care what the world is doing today. I don't care what mess it's at. I'm just going to go be, enjoy me some sunshine today and have a good day. Right? Sometimes you just got to do that. You deserve that. In fact, really, if the truth is known... God has those kind of days every day because he doesn't let anything bother him. Right? There's, there's righteousness, peace, and joy, which is the kingdom of God. And God is up there in heaven where he's far above all this stuff. And if you're seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, then you're up there too by faith. Right? And so just don't let yourself get ground down and wound down and beat up. And I just don't want to live anymore. Oh, give me a break. Give yourself a break. Get your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. I'm just so angry. I'm even angry at God. 
I'm angry at people. I'm angry at my life. I'm even angry with myself. Well, you know, you're going to have to get past that, right? Because joy and peace and forgiveness, that's how to be happy. Joy, peace, forgiveness, trust in God. Cast it upon him because he cares upon for you, right? Cast all your cares for, on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Worry doesn't fix anything. There you go, brother. God's final justice. We've got just a few more verses to cover here today. It's a long chapter, but we're not going to cover all of them. God's final justice for evil doers, verse 9 and 10 says this, For evil doers shall be cut off. For those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So if evil doers are going to be like that grass clippings. But you, you're going to inherit the earth. You know, I think it's funny. If you're not covetous, you're not, you're not covetous. You're not the kind of person that says, I want everything and I want all of it. And I want more of it. And I, want, I want a bunch of it. You're not that kind of person. So because you're that kind of person, person that loves God and people before instead of money you know it's all it's you should be diligent you should save money you should work and and have you know earn money make money put money away it's a good wise thing to do it's it's, a, it's good stewardship of your resources but the main thing is that you just got to love God and love people more than all that stuff and if you do you're one of those meek people that's gonna get it all the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, that's kind of a big inheritance, right? One of these days, he's got a kingdom coming on this in this world. And it's, you know, we're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, the Bible says. So I'm an heir to the daddy who's got the biggest ranch in the, king, in the, in the universe. <laughs> I'm the biggest property owner. The guys that got the most acreage that owns more lakes and mountains than anybody else. And he's my daddy. And I'm his heir. And I'm a joint heir with his favorite son, Jesus. Whoa. Well, what's that mean, Pastor Mike? That means just love God, trust God. He'll take care of you. Employ diligent principles of godliness. You know, people need to, if they're able and, and until it's time to retire, you need to work and make a paycheck and put some away and pay your bills and, and, and you know, and, and make wise investments and stuff like this and make wise decisions and be generous and kind with it, with it as well. But, it, but in the meantime, uh, you just got to trust in the Lord and he'll take care of you. So it says, the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek going to get it all. You're going to get it all. I don't want it all. I don't need all that. Well, you're going to get it anyhow. <laughs> Meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Come on. Think about that phrase, abundance of peace. We're talking about the devil can't disrupt my, my, my peace. He can't take my joy away from me. He can't do it. I've got an abundance of peace. You know what Jesus said the night before he knew he was going to be put on trial and crucified? What did he say? He says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give, I give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said that the night before he was going to have the worst day any human being would ever have on the face of this earth and all the history of mankind. And he said, I got so much peace, I got extra. Let me give you some. So that tells me a couple of things. Number one, he's truly my source of Peace. Hallelujah. But not only that, I can have peace even when things don't look really wonderful in my life or in the world around me. Right? You can have true peace even when things don't look wonderful all around you. Delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Trusting God brings great peace. Next, please. Walk steady with Jesus. We're going to move on down to Psalm, 23, Psalm 37, down to verse 23 and 24. You ought to read this. this. There's so many. I got a lot of stuff underlined in this psalm, you know, not several of them, actually. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And like I used to do with everything else in Bible college when they told us to memorize verses, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in 
his way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Good way to memorize stuff. Make a little melody out of it. And there's other verses that go with that. But, but to know this, you know, that uh, God's steps, if you're, and it says the steps of a good man. What's that mean? Well, I'm not, I know how good I am. I'm not sure I'm that good. Well, wait a minute. You're righteous in the blood of Christ if you have repented and believe in him. Amen? Am I not putting anybody to sleep right yet? Yep, yeah, right, right. The righteous, the steps of a good man. Are ordered by the Lord. If you if you decide I want to do what's good, I want to do what's right, I want to do what pleases God, He'll order your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delights in His way. Now the next part's very helpful to know this. Even if you fall, even if you stumble, anybody stumble every once in a while, every once in a while, ever in your life? <laughs> I've done more than stumble a few times, but it's. Thank God it's, few, it's more and more seldom, <laughs> less and less often, but I've had some of those times. And, but guess what? I'm not going to be utterly cast down. I'm not going all the way down. I might have stumbled, I might have tripped a little bit, but you know, somebody's there to catch me. It's my Father in heaven. He's there, right? He's there to hold me up and to catch me. <laughs> what? If I fall, he's right there. My father is right there to catch me. In Jesus' name and hold me up. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Thank you, dear Father God, that you uphold me with your hand. Amen in Jesus' name. Praise God. So, I, you know, later on, someday this week, maybe you'll go back and read Psalm 37 on your own and say, I remember when he talked about that. I remember when he talked about that. I remember when he talked about that. This is a great psalm. Boy, this is building up my faith, right? That's what it's all about. You know, we, a pastor can't possibly give you every little single thing that you're going to need for your life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but it can give you some detail but a lot of principles. Some detail, not all the detail. We'll give you some detail and a lot of principles that if you'll apply this principle to your situation, your situation may be different from mine, but it'll work for you if it's a divine principle from the Word of God. Amen? So do it. Learn it and apply it in Jesus' name. Next, please. All our days, God is faithful. So I'm just hitting you some highlights out of Psalm 37. I have been young, and now I had to modify that verse a little bit. I have been young, and now I'm older. <laughs> Yet have I not seen the righteous, righteous forsaken bread, nor his descendants begging bread. I know this. Linda and I are tithers and givers. We do more than tithe. We go way past the tithe. And I hope that you'll learn the, the blessings of that someday. That everybody should do at least a tithe. And, but, you know, I know this. When I was, uh, even when I'm in the audience, if, if the plate goes by, I always put something in it, even if it's not much. You know, I've already put my tithe in last week, last Sunday, and but I'm in a meeting. And I say, well, I got to put something in there. I always put something in there. I want to sow seed wherever I can. When you cast your bread upon many waters, it's going to come back in many days and come back and bless you. Amen. Amen. So I don't ever feel good about an offering time coming and going and, I, and just ignoring it. You know, because. Even if I've already done my tithe, then that kind of has already been done. Maybe because I don't you know, get paid or people get paid my once a month or twice a month or stuff like that. Your tithe. But I still feel like I want to put something in. Maybe designated for a missionary or whatever. That's next week. It says, I have been young and now I've been old, I'm older. <laughs> Yet I've not seen the righteous for a second nor a seed to, seed to beg, de, descendants breaking bread. God's not going to let you be a beggar. You don't have to be a beggar with God. You don't. He wants you to have abundant need, abundant supply of your needs. He, he, God, you know, when people say, I've, I've been begging God, God, please, why don't you do something? God, I need you to do something. God, God, I'm begging you. Well, don't be a beggar. He doesn't want you to beg him. He wants you to be sincere when you ask him, but ask in faith. Ask based on some Bible promise that you have found in the Word of God. And if you'll come and ask him on the basis of what he has already said in his word, and you ask in faith, and you walk away saying, thank you, Lord, I know you're going to come through for me. That's a lot better than, I begged him, and I begged him, and I begged him, and why isn't God coming through for me? God, I'm begging you. Don't do that. You're not a beggar. 
the prince and the pauper? You're the prince, you're not the pauper. <laughs> you are, the Bible says that we who are in Christ have royal blood in our veins. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread. He said, pray that, and he'll just do it, right? He didn't say, beg him. Oh, God, please. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're in destitute need and you really don't have any food to eat, talk to me and we'll get you some food. Okay? Because we don't want anybody in our midst to suffer like that. But in the meantime, then we'll try to teach you how to take advantage of what God is actually trying to hand you out of his generosity. Right? Everybody still hearing me? Next, please. So here's where we end it. Choose God's way and be blessed forever. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. There's a lot more to this psalm, but this is all I felt like the Lord wanted me to talk to you about today. Choose God's way and be blessed. Depart from evil. Leave sin alone. Touch not the unclean thing, the Bible says. Don't let it enter your house through the television or your computer or your mind as you're going down the street or somebody that doesn't know God doesn't have Christ in their heart and they want to tell you some dirty, filthy thing. You don't have to listen to that. Don't snicker or laugh when something profane and wicked and dirty and vile comes before you. It's not anything to snicker at. That's something Jesus died for, to, to forget people forgiven of. He, in fact, when Jesus was on the cross, he bore all of our sins, right? So that very thing that people want to just sort of snicker at and look over, look at and say, well, it's funny, it's funny, it's, funny. it's not right, but it's kind of funny. It's, it's Jesus actually paid the price for that on the cross. He suffered because of things like that. Anyhow, depart from evil and do good. Touch not the unclean thing. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. I tell God I want you to help me to hate sin and love righteousness. Hate sin. Hate sin. Hate sin. Love righteousness. Whatever is right. Amen? Detest vile things that offend God. The Bible says something about uh, not offending the Holy Spirit. You know, if you're a child of God and you're a temple of God and God lives only inside of you, then the Holy Ghost has to go through everywhere you go. And he has to endure whatever you put him through until, he, until you know, he's not going to just up and leave you. So whatever you do and whatever you look at and whatever you listen to and whatever you say and whatever you engage in, it's actually the Holy Ghost is having to go through that with you. So, and people say this, well... Pastor, I'm sorry. I know you're a pastor. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said those cuss words. I almost said, I said, you know, don't worry about me. I'm not your judge. But somebody else is hearing every word you say, whether I'm around or not. You know. But depart from evil, do good, dwell forevermore, a forevermore blessing. God says, be holy, for I am holy, and if we'll do that. So I've touched on many points here, and I wish I could touch them all and all again. But the main thing is trust God. Leave sin alone. Follow after him. He'll supply your needs and he'll help you. And you'll live a life that will be your very blessing. The blessing of God in your life will be a testimony to people around you. Let's stand together. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Someday we're going to get ourselves a little bit of music that will start playing right around this time in the service. We'll get that worked out too. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, we give you glory. We give you the glory, Father. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, just for a minute. Help me to praise him. Lord, we praise you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We thank you that you supply every need according to your riches and glory. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You're so good. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. And we just thank you, God, that you supply every need. You take care of us. You bless us. Lord, bless families, bless children. Lord, we have some that are out today because somebody had to have a surgery. We had others that are out today because they got out of town and got sick. And we, we just pray that you help them and every one of those. And we just thank you, God, for that, blessing that. In Jesus' name, Father God, in Jesus' name, before we, before we leave, real quick, is anybody here saying, Pastor, I've got an infirmity in my body today. Would you pray for me? 
I got an infirmity in my body today. Sister, we're going to pray for you.